I'm standing out in the Chennai summer sun. Every second, the sun converts 620 million metric tons of hydrogen into helium. This thermonuclear fusion results in a loss of mass that is converted into energy using the famous equation E equals mc squared. That works out to 3.8 into 10 raised to the power 26 watts. That's 26 zeros. In contrast, your LED light bulb at home is about 10 watts. Watt is a measure of how much energy is generated every second. And then electromagnetic radiation from the sun takes a local train, travels 150 million kilometers in about eight minutes at the speed of light, gets off at the third station, and only 0.0000005% of that original energy hits the Earth's atmosphere. Then the atmosphere reflects back or absorbs a lot of the deadly harmful radiation and lets through what is mostly ultraviolet, visible and infrared light that hits my skin. About 450 watts of solar power. Visible wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation is what we simply call light because our eyes are tuned to detect that range. Infrared radiation essentially feels like heat, but ultraviolet, we will come back to that. If we did not have an atmosphere or a magnetic field, or if the earth was even slightly closer to the sun, I'd be burned to death. Forget that, we wouldn't exist. And from this solar radiation, all life on Earth is made possible. As the ancient Sanskrit saying goes, Suryaha Pratyaksha Devata. The sun is the perceivable god. It's the one we can actually see. Other gods are abstract. Coming back to science, plants use a molecule called chlorophyll to take carbon dioxide from the air, water from the soil, and the energy from sunlight to make glucose. That's photosynthesis. But we do photosynthesis too. It's just that we don't make glucose. We make vitamin D. And it's quite a fascinating process. Remember ultraviolet, one of the components of sunlight that reaches the surface of the earth? Now this is the full spectrum of all electromagnetic radiation. Now let's draw a line. All radiation to the left of this line are non-ionizing, meaning they cannot chemically change molecules in your body, including DNA. This is also why when influencers say silly things like microwave causes cancer, it is ridiculous because it literally cannot. It does not have enough energy. So ultraviolet is ionizing radiation, meaning it can make chemical changes in your body. And there are two kinds, UVA and UVB. UVA penetrates the skin deeper, while UVB, which has more energy, does not go beyond the surface. UVA is the primary cause of photoaging, which is a very fancy technical way of saying skin damage caused by sunlight. If you look at someone who spends hours in the sun over years, like people who work in agriculture, their skin will be very wrinkled because UVA penetrates the skin, damages elastin and collagen in your tissues, causing wrinkles. 95% of UV in sunlight is UVA. We will get back to UVA. Let's shift focus to UVB. It's only 5% of sunlight. When it hits your skin, it converts a form of cholesterol in the skin to pre-vitamin D3. As you stay in the sun, your skin stays warm and that warmth, largely from infrared radiation in sunlight, converts it to vitamin D3, also known as cholecalciferol. But we're not done yet. At this stage, vitamin D3 is still not usable by your body. It needs to travel through your blood to your liver where it is converted to calcidiol, which is a storable form of vitamin D. Still not directly usable. By the way, when you do a blood test to see if you are deficient in vitamin D, this is what is measured. And finally, it's in the kidneys that calcidiol is converted 
to calcitriol, which is the active usable form of vitamin D. And calcitriol is absolutely essential for your body to absorb calcium for bones and phosphorus and is important for immune system and muscle function. This is the easy path. You spend enough time in the sun, cholesterol in your skin with the help of UVB eventually becomes vitamin D and you have healthy bones. But it's not that simple. The moment UVB hits your skin, there are cells called melanocytes that produce a molecule called melanin. This molecule is fundamentally responsible for the color of your skin and hair. And it's mostly present only on the outermost layer of your skin. So all racism, obsession with fair skin are all really literally only skin deep. But back to melanin. It absorbs UVB so that it does not damage DNA. Remember, UVB is high energy ionizing radiation. So melanin reduces the risk of skin cancer. So you can now guess why humans look the way they do across the world. If you're more exposed to sunlight, like in places closer to the equator, your skin produces more melanin to protect you from UVB. So this is why humans living closer to the equator are darker skinned. But here's the catch. If melanin absorbs a lot of the UVB, then there is not enough for vitamin D production. So this is also why humans who evolved closer to the equator are shorter because they absorb less calcium. But here is a fascinating question. All human beings in the world came from ancestors who migrated out of Africa and they were all dark skinned. So how did Europeans end up looking like this with very little melanin? So imagine this. A few hundred thousand years ago, very dark skinned humans from Africa reach Europe. And at those latitudes, there is not much sunlight. So not much UVB. So sure, your skin needs to produce less melanin, but your dark skin already prevents you from making vitamin D. So when there is less UVB, you have a serious problem. So evolutionary biologists believe that some groups of human beings might have developed a genetic mutation that resulted in very little production of melanin. And by the way, those first low melanin babies would not have survived the harsh sun of Africa. But Europe was just perfect. They were able to generate enough vitamin D because they did not have enough melanin. And this is why Northern Europeans on average tend to be taller, more vitamin D, more calcium absorption. And this is also why Northern Europeans living in hot and sunny parts of the world develop freckles. So enough theory. What does all of this mean for someone watching this video? One, the browner your skin, the more protection you have from photo aging. The fairer skinned you are, the more vitamin D you likely produce. A brown person needs to spend 45 minutes to an hour in the sun three times a week. A fair skinned person needs to spend 10 to 15 minutes three times a week. A common myth, people will tell you that you need to spend time in the morning and evening rays of the sun. That is not true. In fact, UVB intensity is maximum between 10 a.m and 2 p.m. So a shorter amount of time then is more efficient too. But the problem is urban people like us don't really spend enough time in the sun nowadays. We have cars, very few of us do outdoor sports. So there is a good chance that you are vitamin D deficient. It is estimated that 76% of the Indian population is vitamin D deficient. So go get it tested. And if you are deficient, take your doctor's advice. Three, can you get vitamin D from your diet? Yes, but unfortunately, you can only get it from fish, liver, egg yolks, or supplements like cod liver oil. You can also get it from mushrooms. And fun fact, some varieties of mushrooms can produce vitamin D in their skin when you expose them to the sun. But again, this is not the highly usable form of vitamin D you get from animal sources. 
4. Alternatively, you can also get it from fortified foods. Refined oils, milk and breakfast cereals are often fortified with vitamin D. But as a general reminder, you cannot get all the vitamin D you need from food alone. You need sunlight or supplements. And if you are a brown person living in a cold country, sunlight is not enough because your melanin will get in the way of vitamin D photosynthesis. So, supplements. One last thing. Remember how UVA causes skin aging? The solution to that is to wear sunscreen, which absorbs the UV before it damages your skin. But wearing sunscreen will also reduce vitamin D production. So, it's a tricky balance. But regardless, go get yourself tested. Consume vitamin D rich foods. Spend half an hour in the sun thrice a week. And at all other times, wear sunscreen.